welcome to this night, to tonight's uh, live streaming show of Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV Live. I'm your host, Jim Carr, and we got a special guest in the studio here tonight. We have with us, um, what was your name again? Alan? No, uh, Randall Burkhart. We'll tell you that story in a minute, folks. Randall Burkhart from the Triad Bait Company. And he's going to be here today, and we're uh, tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about striper fishing. We're going to tell you some some fish stories, and if anybody can tell a good fish stories, it's my buddy here, Randall. But uh, we're going to show you some of the the tackle that the Triad Bait Company has, and talk to you a little bit about it, and 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 show you some tips and techniques on on how to fish it and how we use it. I know a lot of you guys have probably seen some of our shows that we have done. In the past, we did one just a few weeks ago uh, down to Clark's Hill, and we're going to be doing some more. And as a matter of fact, we got a trip planned here around the 10th, the 14th, somewhere that weekend in April. So we hope to go down there and catch some good stripers. Randall's going to go down and pre-fish a little bit ahead of time, and then we're going to go down and um, hopefully jump on the boat. He's going to put us on some fish. Randall, why don't you tell us a little bit about Triad Bait Company? Tell us a little bit about some of the products, and we'll show the folks here some of your planer boards that you make and different things like that. And there's, a, there's another guy involved in this too, but he's not here tonight, uh, Alan Greer. And um, so, you know, but, but uh, Randall was nice enough to come up here tonight and go ahead and do a live stream with us. So here we go. Well, where would you like to start? Well, tell us a little bit about Triad Bait. Um, you know, you started this thing a few years back. Yeah, about uh, five years ago. Right. Uh, a buddy of mine got me into striper fishing, and uh, when you striper fish, you can lose a lot of lures. So yeah. I got into making lures, and it just kind of grew. I enjoyed making them, and enjoyed making them until I tried to sell them, and then that took the Well, fun. <laughs> you know, at least you don't have to buy your equipment. Exactly. It it. And I give people an alternative method to be able to go out here and fish. If they have to buy bucktails a lot of stores, you know, they're $4, $5 a piece for a three-quarter ounce to one ounce right, bucktail. And right, I'm about, you know, I ain't quite half that, but I'm not much older, right. you know. And uh, my spinner baits, I think, are, uh, it's the quality of my product, I think. The, the vinyl paint versus... Uh, right. The uh, powder paint, if you tie a powder painted lure on and you drop it at the bottom of a right. center console boat, they don't it's gonna crack it or bottom. Yeah. yeah. I mean, powder it, paint it or... breaks all the pieces and these right. are just. What Randall's trying to say is that all their lures, all their products that have the, the different colors and different paints on it, we'll show you this nice orange one right here. All their, all their, their different lures and baits that they have. Um, they have a, a vinyl coating on them. It's not powder paint. It's not epoxy. Right. And yeah. I've literally seen where the you can take yeah. these. When, when Randall first introduced me to Triad Bait, he come up to my place where I was working there at the boat shop, and he took he actually took one of these and threw it on the concrete floor and on the and on the pavement, and it didn't chip. You know, uh, a lot of times, you know. It, epoxy will chip it didn't chip it uh, didn't shatter uh, basically what happens because this is a soft paint it's a hard paint but it's durable it's, it's a soft paint if the lead bends the paint kind of conforms to the bend okay I mean uh, to the to the dent in the six years I've been fishing with them um, I've had two lures hit rocks and I've pulled a little paint off the nose. Mm -hmm. The paint was still hanging on there, folded down. It didn't break off completely. Didn't break off. Yeah, but I mean, they're not, they're not, you can tear them up, but chances are you'll lose it before you lose your paint. Right. And that's, but that hurts somebody's feelings. It does mine. It hurt my feelings to go buy a lure and pay four or five bucks for a bucktail. And when you're done fishing, it's all, you gotta paint it over again for the next trip. Well, or, you know, you you got a bunch of heads look like lead. You might as well buy a lead head. Right. You know. Right. Right. I'm not going to say that the color is always the deciding factor on what catches your fish. Your trailer has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's action, mm -hmm. color, 
scent, flash catches fish. Right. That's why we've gone to noise. The, yeah, we we've gone to the flash that picks up so much more sunlight you right. know, deep in the water. This here is actually a lure that I started making for a guy. He sent me a picture on the computer. Well, he didn't send it to me because I do no computer work, but he sent it to the, my buddy. And uh, he wanted something for Cobia. Okay. And Spro makes a Cobia lure. Okay. And they really wanted, he wanted something that would be like the Spro head and he didn't want it to dive so deep because the cubby were breaking the water. And I told him about the H head. See, the H head has got such a flat bottom. Mm -hmm. When you're pulling it through the water, it, ride, it wants to ride up. Mm -hmm. That's another reason why you can use such a much bigger lure striper now, fishing. Now, you've got a variety of different heads and shapes. Yes, um, I do. Let's, you know, you've got minnow heads, you've got banana heads, like this right here is a banana head. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a banana head. If you can see it here on, on the other camera, here the close-up camera, that's a banana head. All right? Now, what is that? That is a butter bean. A butter bean. Common, okay. Looks common, like a lima bean. Lima bean to me. Yep. Common and then has been around for years. The ago. other one you've got is this shape right here. H head. And what? H head. Okay. What, why the difference? What's the difference? Well, they this, swim different in the water? Yeah, they, this okay. head right here, like I said, it wants to ride up. It's just like a ski on the bottom. So it'll... It, it doesn't fall near as fast and hard. Okay. So, you know, I pull a lot of double rigs. Uh, it's hard to pull a H head like this with a 3 8 minnow head with a shad body on it because they run so close together because this thing don't dive. Mm-hmm. I want my I want my minnow head to dive and go down with my such as this right here, like when okay. I put a shad body. On. Okay. Generally, this head here though, I only use about a three and a half inch shad body. Okay. I go to my bigger heads for the longer ones because you need more hook. Take this head here, three and a half inch shad body, and I pair it with uh, that H head. They're going to run pretty close together because this head doesn't dive. That's why. I use a lot of the butter, oh, butter beans. The butter beans got a high profile. When I first started striper fishing, I did not like a butter bean. I thought, well, what? Now, how does that look like anything? Right, right. Wound up being my favorite ounce and a, ounce to ounce and a half butter bean. Okay. Because that lure will dive like a rock. Okay. It'll take that minnow head and that shad body down for me. I like to pull that pair on planer boards. Okay. That way I can run my stuff out away from my boat. Now, 40, 50 when foot. you talk a pair, you've heard Randall say something, like he's talking a pair, okay? And what we do, if, if you watch, uh, if you haven't, when we're done with this stream, just go check out our couple of striper shows that we've done. We explain it a little bit better to you. What, what we will do is he will run, I'm just going to grab a couple of different ones here. He'll run, we'll run two baits with totally two different colors on one line off the planer boards. And so that way what's happening is you're giving the stripers or the hybrids, whatever you're fishing for, two different baits. They may not want the green one, but they might bite the blue head one with a white tail versus with a blue tail. So there's, we have fished with so many different combinations is when we go out fishing, we're constantly changing to try to find out what the fish want. Then when we find out what they want, we we'll usually switch over a lot of a lot of rods on that that particular bait. Exactly. So you'll go to that color. The thing I like about the butter bean is, like this, like I said, it, it dives so deep. Right. You can run it with you can run this head with. Uh, with an H head, and if you want to run two bucktails, because mm -hmm. this head will not dive like this one will. And when you run the three-way swivel and put what we call doubles, you're going to have a four to six foot span between those two baits. When you've got that much span, you're covering a lot of territory. You hit a lot of strike zone exactly. in the water. If you keep picking up fish on the butter bean, you need to go deeper, period, right. for both baits, right. for, to get both baits. And, and another thing that we do is, is if you watch some of our shows, is that we will fish with downriggers, 
Now, downriggers is a mean of fishing. For some of you guys that don't know, downriggers are a, a, a way of fishing, a technique that will, you can read your fish on the depth finder um, at a certain depth. And it allows you to actually look at your cannonball and put your bait down right in the strike zone. We also, we use planer boards. Mm -hmm. And that's, then you don't get as deep, but we also use lead core line. And it's, it's very technical when you're out trolling. It's, it's, uh, it's really kind of technical, isn't it? Yeah, it's called fishing. Well, yeah, it's called fishing. But I mean, <laughs> we just don't go out and, and tie a bait on and throw it in the water and say, well, we'll troll around with this for a little bit. We're constantly testing. We're constantly looking for fish. Um, I just want to acknowledge David Dibble. I see he kind of signed in and said he was late. But that's okay, David. I'll let it slide this time. Glad you was able to make it. I just want to acknowledge the fact that he was here. Um, anyways, let's talk about some technique. I, I want to show the Alabama rig, the umbrella rig umbrella. down there. Yeah. Let's talk about the umbrella rig and tell people how you fish. This is something I think I think you just started doing this this year or last year, no, didn't you? I mean, no, I've been doing about four years. Oh, have you really? Yeah. Okay, I thought that was you just started yeah. doing that. Okay, I actually have quit doing it in the last year or so as much because of the number of fish I was catching. Okay, I mean, who wants to go and catch 40, 50 fish a day? Well, I do. Uh, <laughs> and, no, it's I, I like fishing umbrella rigs. But I've just gotten to where it's all right. I don't uh, I don't fish them as much as I used to. I've had a really a lot of success off the double. Refresh. Huh? Yeah. Go ahead, just keep talking. I've had a lot of success off the double rigs, and I just as long as I'm catching fish, I don't you know my, right. But the umbrella rig, that's when I use my spinner Let baits. Me, right. Let me ask you something here. Uh, we got a little production issue. Are you still seeing the stream going on on the very top? Okay, David, if you can hear me, just let me know if we're if we got a stream going out to you there. Just uh, message me and let me know because we had a little problem with one camera here. Um, so, anyways, uh, let me see that umbrella rig. Right. So what? And that's actually one of mine. It's a that's... bunch of spinner baits. Yep. And you make these spinner baits? I do. Okay. And you see this line off the middle, that's where I put my trailer, and I'll use some type of a shad body for that. Okay. And uh, the spinner baits work really well in certain lakes, and you will have uh, you'll have a ball on them. I mean, you come in sometimes with two and three fish on that spinner bait. Right. See how it's it kind of wallers. Exactly. Around. It's been hit a lot. It's been bent a lot. It's been now, a lot of you guys out there will recognize this as something that you use for bass fishing. Um, and it's just been kind of refined a little bit. And we use it now also for catching stripers. Okay, thank you, David. Um, about three times heavier. It's yeah. about three times heavier. Now, you guys, you guys, you make these spinner baits. Yep. So all the bait on here is what, what they make. Now, you won't fish this on a planer board because it's too no, heavy. No, it'll pull it, yeah. This is basically either free lining or, it's, or down the, on the downrigger. Downrigger is where I like right. it. You, you'll go back 45 to 60 feet. Right. And if you're marking your fish at 20 foot, this umbrella rig does not fall like a double rig does. Okay. I have found with the umbrella rig like this one here with the small ball instead of a two ounce, yep. it runs more true. It runs about two and a half to three foot below the downrigger. Okay. So if you're walking okay. your fish at 20 feet. Right. This really is going to be down to, about 23, 24 or something, you know. Well, if you go to about 17 on your downrigger, okay. you're going to be right there in their face. You're be right there in the about fish. About six, 15, 16 right. foot, you're going to be right there on them. Uh, and, and, and. When you're it makes watching, a lot of commotion through the water. It's easy to do uh, to keep track of how deep this is because you can watch your downrigger ball on your depth finder, and um, you know um, it will. Uh, I'll get to that question in just a minute, David. Uh, you can use this uh, on a downrigger ball, and you can actually on your depth finder watch the downrigger, uh, the ball, and tell how how deep the bait is. Right. Yeah. So it makes Which, it makes it easy to fish. 
And, and that's this particular. Now and, this one here, for example. Right. That's a lighter it, bait. It is lighter, but again, that is H head spinner bait. Mm -hmm. It doesn't dive. It doesn't fall. It's going to be real close to that downrigger ball. Mm -hmm. If you go through fish at 20 foot and you got it on 17 and you don't hit it, you may want to take that ball on down some more. Mm -hmm. This here will actually fall three to four foot below your downrigger ball because it doesn't ride up. Right. I tip it with a worm just like I do any of my other boat tails. I have a worm right. trailer that I use. And you can use shad wraps, you can use worm now. Yep. We had a real good a lot of luck here last week on them on the worms. It was yep. a green and black one if I if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. No, it's a it's a purple and black. Purple and black, yeah. I mean, I mean purple and green. Chartreuse, purple right. and chartreuse. And it and it is. It's it's really worked well at that lake. And it's got a matching shad body that's the same as the worm. Okay. And it has done well. Okay. But, you know, I've even got umbrella rigs where I use three quarter and one ounce banana heads. Okay. Now you can really get them down there five feet when you put four of them one ounce ones on there. You can get them about five foot below your downrigger ball. All right. You go out about 45, maybe 50 feet. All right. And you can get it down there. It's all, I mean, until you learn, you're, and you're probably going to lose one or two, but the way I started out is, if I'm fishing a lake that the water's 35, 38 foot consistently, I will run my downrigger ball down 20, and I'll go to 25. Mm -hmm. Then I'll start going two foot increments and see. Do you find out when my where the active bait, fish are or when your bait when gets my the bottom? bait starts hitting the bottom? Okay. Then that's one way of really telling how far that right. thing's going to run. Right. Now, like I said, keep up with your, your line across the reel. If you go out about six times on any reel, that's going to be about 60 feet. And we'll tip every one of these spinner baits with, with some worm. kind of a bait, with a worm yep. or a, uh, a swim bait or a shad wrap or a grub. Usually they're tipped with some color variety just because you just don't know on one particular day what the fish are going to be biting on. Uh, David wants to know, Randall, if you can use this rig, and I, and I, I already know the question. I think he's asking about the umbrella rig or he might be asking about the jigs but he's asking if you can use uh these rigs on musky and pike and i i'm sure you can because i've caught musky and pike on you know that that's two fish i've never had the pleasure of targeting because of where we live right it's because and, of where we live <laughs> and uh we don't have that uh the thing i can say about the uh, umbrella rig is yes we have we have caught you catch anything on we this. We have caught yeah. on any umbrella rig, either, either this small, small one here. We've caught anything from perch, crappy, mm -hmm. largemouth. Well, look at that big giant perch you caught, a white perch you caught. Yeah. We called him Holy Smokes. Yeah. Uh, last week. I mean, that was um, he was that perch was probably that big. He was he was a good size yeah. yellow, uh, white perch. Yeah. And uh, we caught him off of one of these jigs. I don't know which one, but... Um, we caught him off of a... Wasn't it that... Well, I'd be lying if I said it, really. Yeah, I know. It's hard to I know. We, to we use so many different video. ones. Yeah. Uh, to the video. All right, now, lead core line. All right. Uh, lead core line is 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 a, something that you use that you... It's line you have on your reel. Unlike monofilament, it's weighted with lead. And it helps you bring different baits down to a certain depth. Uh, every uh, 10 yards of lead core line is 30 feet. So, and they go by colors. Yeah. So every color you let out of lead core line is um, 30 feet. Is 30 feet. Okay. So, you know, you let out three colors, you're 90 feet behind the boat, and that helps you to adjust. Is there any way you can really tell on the depth? Like, say you're up 90 feet, you're out three colors. Well, you, they have a chart on the back of the spool, and when you buy it, it says at certain speeds. It's all got to do with speed. Speed, yeah. Weight of your lure. If the wind's blowing or not, I mean, you know. It, you know, I used to pull nothing but 36-pound lead core line, and I have found that my smaller dime, or the smaller uh, lead core line goes deeper, quicker, and it's truer. 
Mm -hmm. But there's only a certain brand I really like in it because it's so tough that the 18 pound test is actually stronger than the old 36 pound that I used to use that they okay. discontinued making. Okay. Now let's go to planer boards. We make these planer boards. We, whenever we're fishing, you'll see we usually use a downrigger uh, on both sides of the boat. That's to get us down deep. We use planer boards to get us out away from the boat. Uh, we use two. Some guys will use four, five, six planer boards. Just depends. Uh, uh, they'll run one line out with one big planer board and they'll put clips on and they'll attach their different lines to them clips. But um, we use one planer board. Well, as the year progresses and the fish come up a little shallower. You're going to use more. Where you can target them. Okay. Yeah, and especially along the banks, if I'm fishing along the banks, I'll run two on that side. Because that's, the fish are going to be more that's wandering line. through the lake. I have, I like these better that I make because it's one direction. Right. 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 But I also keep a set of these on the board, on the boat, because these can be switched. To make it go either, go either left, way. left or right. Left or right. Starboard yeah. or port. Yep. Right. Yep. And, but in, like anything, you have to go to twist it two or three times. You know, you're going to need a wrench to tighten it back up because it ain't right. going to tight. But I prefer those over these. Um, but I have to keep a set of these on, so. Just in case. Yeah. If not, <laughs> if I, if not I, you know, I have to, have to worry about getting right. those out. And, um, now, these, how we use these, okay, guys, is that we will let out so much line uh, to begin with, uh, right. 30 feet, so we'll say? Uh, 90 to 100. Okay, well, all right. Um, <laughs> depends on how deep we're fishing. And what lures. Yeah. And you're going yeah, to and really what lures. put a smaller lure on right. the planer board. And then when you get out the amount of line that you want to have behind this board, you're going to attach it. And what happens is this one clip right here, and if the camera can see this one clip, one clip right there will go around the line, mm -hmm. and then this line, this one will clip to the line. I, I know you're not going to be able to see that open, but that will open up. That will clip to the line. And from that point on, what you do is you put it in the water, and you open up your bail on your reel, or you push your button in, and you let it go out, and you kind of thumb spool it. And what happens is that this will keep going out to the distance that you want to have it away from the boat, okay? Lock down your reel and set it in your rod holder. Now, when a fish bites this, if it's a big striper, usually what's going to happen is they will pull this right here. They will pull the line out of there, and this will go sliding right back to the leader. The three-way, yeah. Yeah, and then you just go ahead and you reel your line in, and you take this board off, and you can go ahead and play the fish. Um, you don't want this to have to come off your line because then what will happen is you're going to have to pull all your lines up and you're going to have to go back and retrieve it. So that's what this is for right here. That keeps it attached to your line so you can take it off and put it in the boat and finish fighting the fish. Um, so these are a real effective tool right here. Uh, it helps you to get your lines out away from the boat and we've caught a many a fish fishing away from the boat on the sides of the boat. Another two or three weeks, that's going to be an important weapon in your Planer boards. Yep. Yep. Um, what else? What else do you have that um, I don't? You don't have the inline spinner, but you do make an inline spinner, and that would really be good for musky and pike. That inline right. spinner. The thing about the inline spinner is it eliminates you running uh, a double rig because you really need to put a good quality ball bearing swivel Real, no, on your swivel. On, on your line because regardless of how it runs some reason though it does want to twist a little bit sometimes if it gets hit uh, i don't know what happens but every now i've had them to twist and you don't know it and you don't know it when you're trolling it back there exactly 75 feet back you can't use enough swivels when you're trolling okay make sure you're using a lot of swivels uh quality if you don't you yeah quality swivels because if you don't you're going to get a lot of line twist and then what's going to happen is that you're going to have all kinds of issues with your lures getting all tangled up with each on each other and everything. Like um, the little three eighths lead head I showed you a while ago, it is notorious for a bass or crappie or something hit that little joker with that little three and a half inch shad body, and you don't realize it, and he pulled it 
the tail went up here and stuck around the hook. Well, then that thing goes to twisting, and you don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. You know, well, you had just got it all started all over with your leader. Mm -hmm. But that's why the three way, the three way will catch most of it, it'll help you. But you, you will just have to replace leaders every now and again. You have to, you right. have to check your stuff every now and again. Right. Right. Because you never know when something's hit it. That's right. A little bitty one. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, you, you got to get used to watching your rods because we had we had one if on. If you ever have a pull down, you might as well pull it in and check it. Yeah. It could have damaged something. Yeah. yeah. We had one on here uh, that last time we was down there. He was on there for a while. Remember that small hybrid I had? Didn't even know we didn't even know, we didn't had even know he was on there. One reason because we're using you know heavy duty rods now. Yeah. Rods you know, don't really have to have too special of equipment. Uh, what pound test monofilament do you suggest that a person should be using? Well, my main line, I use 40 pound. 40 pound. Because I may leave it on there for two or three years. Okay. You know, the main line. What about your leader? Well, that's just it. I mean, I, I use, depending on the time of the year, I use anywhere from 15 to 25 pound leader. In okay. The, you know, the late time. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, you got your main line ties onto your three-way. And about every time I go fishing, I always retie my three ways. You know, I like I like to cut a few feet off of it. Mm -hmm. But from the three way out, you'll have one leader about four and a half to five foot, and the other one six to seven, about the length of your rod. You got to shorten along. The long leader takes your light bait, so it runs out here like this. the the heavy The heavy lure goes on the short leader, mm -hmm. and they run like this right here that way. Right. And, one above uh, the other. Right. And one a little in front of the other as well. But um, that's the reason why I run double rigs. I've enjoyed, you know, hitting fish. You know, you go through there and, you know, it's heartbreaking when you go through and your depth finder shows you a, just right. a spaghetti of fish. Right. And you got five, six rods out the back. And they're the all they're all about going off at one time. And you want and you want to see them, and you just know they're all going to go off at one time, and instead, none do. Yep. But I have had five, six rods go off, and had two fish on every rod. Yep. And well, we did we did back in October when we were down there. We, we had uh, uh, no October, November, October. Yeah. Yeah. We had a couple that we we had caught. Um, uh, let's see. Great man, sorry, but I guess. Okay, I don't guess he was uh, got to go. Okay, David, you got to go. You got to go. We will just go ahead, and you can finish watching the live stream. It'll be uploaded very shortly. You can watch it there. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Okay. Um, if anybody else has any questions, just feel free to ask Randall or myself there, and we'll answer them the best we can. Uh, tonight we're. Uh, Doing a live stream here for Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV Live. And uh, with me here, I have Randall uh, Burkhart from the Triad Bait Company. And they are in Lexington, North Carolina. They make a real fine quality jig. It's a uh, striper jig. I guess you could throw these at bass. I guess anything that swims would eat it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we primarily fish for um, stripers and hybrids with the... Um, with these so um you know they're they're a real good real good bait um so another thing i'd like to point out is people striper fishing i've got several friends i fish with quite often i've got one that doesn't use anything any bigger than that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean he catches fish. i've seen a lot of people use small ones yeah you know um and does that does, does it kind of go i mean you know, you hear a lot of guys say catfishing, no matter what, you hear them say, the bigger the bait, the more chance you got to catch in a bigger fish. Now, does that really apply for the jigs? I mean, you think? Again, it's fishing. It's fishing. Some days it is. Whatever they want. Some days it's not. But whenever I catch a striper and I've caught, for instance, I used to love Boone Lake. Mm -hmm. Go up there and you get in a schoolie of stripers that's, three, four pounds, and you catch one that might not be but 16, 18 ounces, you know, barely over a pound, and he spits out a shad eight, nine inches long, I want to try bigger bait, mm -hmm. all right? 
bigger baits easier to get down deeper without going so far back out of the boat. Mm -hmm. See, I've got a buddy that will not fish more than two and a half, three colors of lead core in the water. You seen where we went to Strom Thurmond. Right. We didn't catch nothing until we got seven, eight right, colors Right, out. right, right. That's with 60 foot leader, a 60 foot monofilament leader tied to lead core and seven to nine colors in the water and we started catching fish. Yeah, and but that's what you that's what we had to do to catch fish. That's right. A lot of we winding in and all, a lot of reeling, but you know, we may not have caught a fish if we hadn't have, hadn't have put out that much line. We started out at three and four colors. Yeah. We fished for a couple of hours, we hadn't caught anything. We run the, I used my downriggers for my depth. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why they didn't hit downriggers. They didn't hit them. They did not hit them. But when we got the lead core out there, six, seven, eight, nine colors, which is as deep as the uh, downriggers, then we started catching fish. Could have been different than bait. Who knows? True, maybe, but we were running the same bait on both. Right, things. but maybe they were just swimming and acting a little different. Who knows? Well, um, and it just could have been a day that they were skittish because remember, it was windy. Yeah. It was windy. could have been skittish from the boat. I don't know why. Normally, downriggers is one of my biggest catch. I, I mean, I'll catch more of my fish off of that right. than anything. Right. Because I can get it down there to them quicker, and faster, them. I can target yeah. that fish. Yeah. Um, your bigger fish are deeper. It'll be they'll be below them. I will go below those that school of fish mm -hmm. with some of the downriggers. I'll leave the lead cores for this top the top ones. Mm -hmm. And my planer boards. I like the planer boards because I can also turn my eight foot boat into a sixty foot boat. You know, mm -hmm. instead of just fishing, you know, 10, 12 foot wide with the rod holder turned like this, you're going out there and fishing 60, 70 foot wide, eight foot. That's the thing I like about my planer boards. They're very light. Right. They'll run out and not so far back. Right, right. You know, you've seen them, you watched them. Uh, they're not the prettiest planer boards in the world, but they, they don't cost no. the pretty ones either. Well, that's just it. They're half the cost of what, yeah. what, uh, what they, you know. Yeah. Um, now you can get any of these products if you are so inclined on the Triad Bait uh, Facebook website, and there's a phone number there if they want to call. Um, mm -hmm. Randall makes these. Uh, matter of fact, there's a phone number right up. No, no there's not. It's not on that one. Neglected to put it on there. <laughs> but um, well, it's made the USA. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> but uh, we will, um, you know, you can, you know, it, it's easy to find out. If you just go to try, uh, Facebook backslash Triad Bait, and you'll be able to have a phone number there. You can call Alan, and he can, you know, talk to you about these baits and that type of thing. You know, like, like, you know, these, I'm really surprised that the cost is not as much as I thought it would be for these is the, with the quality that goes into them. And being handmade and not machine made, you know, it just seems to me that um, they're a really good bait. But now Randall makes these planer boards. He makes two different types. Like he was saying, he's got the one that you can use one board on either side of the um, of the boat, and then he's got these here, and these are kind of dedicated to the left and right side of the boat. And these are. You're selling these for how much? Thirty dollars a set right now. Okay, thirty right now, thirty dollars a set. So if you need some plain boards, you don't have any, you can just uh, get hold of us, or you can get hold of uh, the Triad Bait guys, and we can set you up with with some of them plain boards. We use them all the time, and they work really good. If you guys are going to go out and do any striper fishing, and striper fishing, um, uh, what you got, the uh, producer just wrote Randall on the board over there. Is that because I called him Alan again? Or, okay. No, he said For you some could call reason. Alan. He said you could call Alan at Triad Bay. Oh, yeah, you he could said, call Alan, Alan at Triad Bay. We try to use Alan's number because that's about the only thing he's good for is answering the phone. <laughs> okay. All right. But Alan will answer the phone. But uh, let me tell you about that Alan and Randall thing. For some reason. We went fishing two weeks ago down to Clark's Hill or Strong uh, Storm Thurman Lake, and down in the uh, South Carolina Georgia border. And 
we, for some reason I had a brain fart or I had a, a lapse. I don't know what it was. Didn't get enough sleep the night before we went out fishing, but Dimension. I couldn't get Alan out of my mind. I don't know what was going on, but all day long, I'd have to correct myself. I just kept calling him Alan, kept calling him Alan. I'm surprised he didn't throw me off the boat, but we had a good time fishing. And, um, well, he he said we could make a good worse. blooper video. I've been called so much worse that Alan's really not that bad. Anymore. Oh, okay. So so you don't mind being called Alan now? Nah, okay. It's, it's a lot better than what I've, I've been called by my mama. <laughs> well, I guess, that. I guess we all have. But um, Anything we forgot? I mean, you know, you've got, you know, there again, you've got... Is that a striper bait or is that an Believe ocean bait? Not, I do use them striper fishing. How I, heavy is that? That is a two ounce. Wow. I make those in uh, two, three, and four is all I make those in. But That's a pretty you know, bait. It is. And like I was saying, the guy that I made these for and called me or uh, sent me these pictures, he was, that's the ultimate man, the same thing as Brody using. He was paying like $7 or something a piece down there at the beach. And, you know, I had been tying some synthetic hair stuff, like this head here. That's I didn't one. have any tied to bring, but I, I tie these. Well, anyway, I said, sure, I can do that. And I figured that, you know, I don't get the $4.50 for it tied with a real bucktail. Mm -hmm. And synthetic hair and cost me just a touch more. So I went to, I like 4 75 on these and... And he bought like 60 of them. Almost, every, about every one of these is real bucktail. Yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, all I use is You got some tail. synthetic uh, coloring in here, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that, but uh, it's all real authentic bucktail, so. And um, I do two-tone. Yep. And that is my new, not new, that is, that is the other type of uh, flash that I use. I have a fine, and then I have what they call the accent, flash blue accent. Those are the two that I use because they pick up so much good, good color. But we two-tone, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Now that, like I said, everything increases the cost just a little bit, but not right. that much. Right, Just like, I don't, years ago, and the, you know, there's certain heads you just can't do it. But, you know, we took, uh, we took and painted our eyes on. And we used to paint the eyes on everything. Butter bean, the banana head, and all. And we went to stick on eyes because they really make them look so much more Right, they make them more dressy. alive, yeah. It le makes them look so much more expensive, too. Right, but and then the eyes don't cost more. that much. Um, well, the 3D eyes do. Now, the flat stick-ons that I use... Mm -hmm. Like these right like, here. Yeah, like these right yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, those are not near as bad. Those are not near as costly to me. But the 3D eye... But, you know, there's a reason why this board has got so many 3D eyes on, like the Butterbean. They're mine. Mm -hmm. They weren't, <laughs> these boards go in my boat. Huh. And I'm not afraid, I am not afraid to throw, I'm not afraid to troll a lure that size. Right. Because we got down to Strong Thurman, me and a buddy of mine here in September, September, we went down and we was catching a fire out of fish and all of a sudden, it just kind of turned off on us. Okay. I tied on a black two-ounce butter bean. I mean, banana head. That is a two-ounce mm -hmm. banana head. I tied that on. I didn't troll 200 yards. Caught another fish. So we put some bigger lures on and started picking up a couple of fish in there until the feed got back on. Mm -hmm. Our bigger lures pulled us out a couple of fish. Wow. You know, but some people will not troll. They're not going to pull a two ounce load, and I don't know why. Well, a lot of people might think that a weight that big is too big, but it's not. I mean, it's not. if you're catching 15 to 25, 30, 40 pound fish, this ain't, this is nothing for that. I got news for They're you. eating that's stuff no, bigger than that. That's nothing for a three pound striper. Yeah, I mean, have you, you know, I mean, so a mouth on a striper is like a mouth on a catfish. They've got a big mouth. I mean, like I said, I was up at Boone Lake. I seen I, I pulled a few out when they was feeding, and they would flopped around the boat, and they throwed shad out eight nine inches long. They right. weighed three pounds. Right. So why would you be afraid to throw? You know, troll a two ounce bucktail. Mm -hmm. It's in circumference. The size of it is no bigger than eight inch shad. Mm -hmm. Now. 
these lures here, you have a lot of extra hair. But I do that for people that's going to throw them for cobia. When I striper fish, I cut my hair off. You cut some of it off? Inch behind the hook, tip it. And tip it. snake worm. Okay. That yeah. way the worm will show up but better. But it's up to you. Whatever purpose you want to use it for, I mean, you can cut it down to a half inch and tip yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Uh, anybody have any questions for either Randall or myself? Um, we're doing a short live stream tonight uh, for, with uh, Randall Burkhart from the Triad Bait Company. We're talking striper fishing. We're telling some fish stories there, of some of the places we've been and some of the things we've done and the fish we've caught. And Randall's showing everybody some of their bait. Uh, the Triad Bait Company, they are in Lexington, North Carolina. And... Um, I see the uh, the guy from Hook Them Fish is just tuned in. How you doing there tonight? Glad you uh, were able to join us. If you have any questions tonight, uh, just go ahead and shoot them to us. We're going to go just a few more minutes here, and we'll probably get out of here because Randall's got a long ways to go. It's about a two-hour ride, and we had some business tonight we had to do, and we decided, well, we might as well take advantage of having him in the house and do a, a, a live stream. So um, that's what we're doing tonight. A lot of this right here, there's a lot of stuff we're not we're not covering tonight on striper fishing, mainly because it was a last minute kind of a last minute thing. Uh, I knew I was going to do this before Randall did. I don't think you knew until this morning, but um, you I didn't know, really knew it that early. But. You didn't even know it that early, but you know, we'll either do a. Um, but I was born with one thing. I was taught a long time ago: if you can't dazzle them with brilliance. Mm -hmm. Baffle them with BS. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, can, we, can we talk one about you know since this was? Can we talk a little bit about Alan? We can talk about anything you want. You want to talk? You want to beat up on Alan a little bit? Well, you know, since we do have the guide service thing too. Uh, and I haven't even mentioned that. Yeah. They, they do have I mean, a guide service. Done, well, like I said, it it was thrown and it it just dawned on me too. Uh, we do guiding. About anywhere. Again, we can't fish all the lakes all the time and know right. where the fish are all the time. But we also don't charge what most people charge. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to go on the lake, nice boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real nice boat. Uh, Plenty of room. Yeah. Uh, you can't beat the company. The bait's free. Uh, insults are free. But Alan does crappy. I do striper. Mm-hmm. And we have a really good line of crappy lures too, you know, as well. You know. That's right. Uh, crappy, all kinds of different kind of, kind of crappy jigs. We're going to get Alan up here soon, I hope. And well, I'll just come uh, back and bring the lures. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about crappy fishing. We'll do a, a live stream webinar on that, and we'll show you some of the the baits they make. And um, they there again, they make really nice baits. He started making one out of bottle caps. We'll and, he, and he says it, and he puts he puts a little rattle inside of them, bends them over. Didn't I hadn't seen them yet. I think I know what he's talking about, but he catches the fire out of, out of crappies. They fish. do. They, yeah. re they really want Out of a darn bottle cap. So got a lot of nice bass off of them around here as well. Yeah. Uh, got one question. I don't have a thing on this table for smallmouth bass. They are hooked in fish. Yeah, you do. I do? Well, oh, what yeah. do we got? Uh, about anything? Boone Lake. Uh, Holston Lake. Um, where else have we been? Watauga Lake, smallmouth bass. We caught the crap out of them on that. Okay. On that. What did you What did you tip them with? With a shed body, three and a half. Okay, so you body. did something like this. I can get that camera there. To, I don't yeah. that camera. Well, almost. This is about the same thing. But, but at Holston Lake and Boone Lake, we got into them one day and we caught four and a half, five pound smallmouth. Right. On that banana head, and this is this is you know they can be used for smallmouth these jigs. So oh, you, and all that is right there is just a lead head. It's just a lead head, is all it is, and you can tip that with a worm. You can tip it with your favorite bait. I I, I know some of you guys that are bass fishermen, like I know Hook them fish. He, he fishes well at anything, anyways. But I mean, uh, I watch yeah, some of his videos, and you know you just you can tip it with anything. Uh, you know. Worms, you can tip it with a, a shad body, anything you but want to tip it with. Not. A this grub. Is, this three quarter ounce high profile butter bean and that banana head, that head there, 
those two heads right there, we have caught a large amount of uh, spotted Small bass. Mama. Yeah. And at Lake Norman, the spot, spotted mm -hmm. bass? Oh, I bet the spotted bass eat oh, them up. Oh, Lord. Right. You can't hardly fish for the striker because of spotted bass on them. But right. No, that smallmouth, we went up there to Holston and Watauga or Boone Lake, and we caught some smallmouths in there that uh, they were unbelievable. You know, mm -hmm. and everybody said, you know, you best catch them on something with flash. No, we call them a lot. You oh, know, man. especially when you get out there in the middle of the lake or in deep water, you'll catch that smallmouth on that banana head or that butter bean in a hurry. Right. Or right. that shed button. Well, I mean, is there anything we have forgotten? We, um, you just say you want to talk about Allen. We never did. What, what, what? Well, I did. I, okay. I did. I, he, he makes the bottle cap lures. Makes, makes the crappy pan for jigs. Little, yeah, he makes the little jigs and he ties them out of squirrel tail. Right. Some of them out of squirrel tail. Right. Which is a cute little jig. Right. You know, and uh, a lot more effective than I ever thought. He stole that idea from me. Yeah, well, yeah. actually, he made you some, I think. Oh, okay. He, he asked him to make oh, them. He, if he, if he took them. my idea, he better make me some, right? And, well, <laughs> that was whenever I first came up to see you. Okay. And you was asking me that, so he made you some, and... Uh, that was between you and him. I don't remember because, see, he handles crappy stuff. Right, right. And I handle the striper you stuff. You handle the more bigger fish. Yeah. And um, But anyway, he he did get that idea from you. And and we have a never-ending supply of squirrels, too. So. Well, that's another thing. you got to have a good supply of squirrels. Yeah, we do. <laughs> but, uh, we have pecan trees. Yeah. And You do. Yeah, you do. But... Uh, yeah, Alan does the crappy fishing, and we do, you know, we do guiding, and uh, matter of fact, he had a trip Saturday, and it was not the best weather, and I hate it, but uh, Alan done a trip for uh, a man and his wife's got cancer, and okay, he took them fishing. I hate to hear that. We did, too. And man. But there was a reason, there's a reason for everything, and uh, right. me and Alan talked about it, and he said something, he said, I really hate to charge him. I said, you know, don't. Leave it up to them to do what they can do. Right. You know. Right. Um, oh, you hate to do something. You hate to do somebody like that. Anybody you know what I mean? That, anybody's got cancer like that. I mean, you know, if you can help them, do it. To a certain point, there's a point. Right. There's a point where money's not that important. Exactly. You know. But um, well, all right. I know you have a long ways to go home, uh, Randall. So we're gonna. I guess we'll go ahead and close it out. If nobody has any more questions, anybody who did tune in tonight, I really appreciate it. Um, go to Facebook backslash Triad Bait if you want to check out some more of their products. If you want to order some, you can order them right there. There's the phone number there. If you want, if you're local or if you're coming down to this area, the North Carolina area, and you would like to jump on the boat with Randall and go catch some stripers or get on the boat with Alan, do the same thing. You can get to their guide service right through Triad Bait Company. And believe me, these guys will put you on fish. Um, we use them to go out. We want to go out filming and on for stripers, and we want to make sure we get some fish. We use these guys, and they will put you on fish. So give them a call. Uh, we want to remind everybody that next week, uh, around April 10th, if I can get the producer to hold up my little cue card, make sure I got the date right there, uh, we're going to have another giveaway. Now, last week, I did, really didn't know what we were going to have, but I know what we have now. We're going to have a couple of reels. We're going to have a really nice bait caster that uh, uh, Caleb at uh, Triad, uh, Cable, Table. Table Rock, thank you. Um, Caleb down to Table Rock Outdoors uh, gave us two that we're going to draw on. We've got uh, another open face reel. We've got some uh, tackle from Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply. So that drawing, we're going to start it right around the 10th. I will do a stream or I will do a short video and put it on Facebook. And I'll also put it here on uh, YouTube. So to let you guys know uh, what the rules is, it's more or less going to be a subscriber only drawing. And so you guys are going to want to get in on that. You'll win a real nice uh, Daiwa uh, bait casting reel. And that will start somewhere around April 10th, and it will go for about a week. We're going fishing on the four, weekend of the 14th, so that next week, about Monday or Tuesday, we'll go ahead and we'll do the drawing. So now You do that once a month? 
We do it once a month, yes. All right, well, I'll tell you what, yep. in May, um, I will get together a card of about 16 buck Wow, pills. okay. 16 buck That would be great. And a few lead heads and different assortment as far as weights and uh, colors. Well, we really appreciate that. Um, donate those. That's what's nice about having guys like this for sponsors, everybody. You know, they, they're, you know, they're willing to share some of their stuff and, and to let folks out there use it. And it not only helps, you know, it helps them because, you know, the, you're getting to use some of their products and you're getting to see how really good that they work. So we really appreciate all of our sponsors out there, whether they're monetary sponsors or product sponsors. We really appreciate them. We appreciate all the help that they give us. So anyways, uh, I guess that's going to be it. Randall? Thanks one more for, thing. Thank you. I, I, oh, I one, more, one, one more, more thing. one more cast. If you buy our lures on the bucktails, we do guarantee the hair. I mean, if something Won't come out, that, if that, well, if that's, I've, I've had a couple that the fish have tore the hair up on really? them. Really? You know, about to eat them off. But I may have caught. So you're guaranteeing that lure? That if this, if this string comes loose and it loses its hair, we will retie them. Yeah. You guys heard that. These but lures, these you, guaranteed never, lures. I've never had it to happen. Well, that's what I've you don't want it, to happen. I've lost it. I've lost it way before. I wish we could show two our glow in the dark bucktails. Ah, uh, we got too many lights. Yeah, we got too many lights. <laughs> but these things right here, if you like trolling at night, at night, or and we kind of like to go at night sometimes trolling, and in the summertime when it's really hot. These babies. They I bet they do. We'll have to do a show. Babies, we're going to have to do something. We'll have to do a show, so, yeah. Because when I cut the light off to leave at night, when I leave out of my shop, it's unreal how these things will glow. And they'll last 15 to 20 minutes. Wow. I mean, they're. All you got to do light. is bring them up, put a flash on them, charge them back up. Exactly. Yeah. But we use them like the lead heads when we're trolling for trout. I burn these deep lights. Uh -huh, when uh -huh. you get that. I've got some small 316 lead heads that I've done in glow in the dark. And we troll for trout with a little shad body on them. And I'm going to tell you what, it's killer. It's neat. Cool. So you'll want to watch for that. Randall's going to put together a package for maze drawing. And uh, don't forget, the uh, the April 10th drawing will be coming up real soon. I'll make sure I advertise it. All right, Randall, you got to head home. Appreciate you coming and stopping by. Uh, uh, folks, check these guys out, and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you tune in again uh, next week. We'll probably have another live stream here next week sometime. And I really appreciate all you guys watching. And I appreciate the questions. And like always, I'm Jim from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV Live. We'll catch you somewhere next week. And the great outdoors when we do it all again. Thanks for tuning in, guys.